guys, guess who's back? I'm back. Coco's <laughs> back, we're on another adventure. We're in Greenwich, we see that hill there. Cardiac Hill. We're heading up that hill now. Come with us if you're curious about stars, ships and clocks, or you just want to look inside the Royal Observatory. Keep watching, we'll show you once we're inside. We're at the Royal Observatory. I've got my NASA cap on. Let's go, we're ready, come with us. We're right now on the prime meridian line. This basically yeah. separates the east and west on the map. So if you had a world map, Tell him where she's standing right now. She's on the west side. The west world. side. I'm on, the, I'm on the east side. So east on side versus west side. I'm west side all the way, baby. East, baby. <laughs> Everyone needs this night. And look what happens when you stand on it. You're literally east and west at the same time. This is what determines the Greenwich Mean Time. So that just goes to show you, Greenwich really is the centre of the world. I hope you remember me from the Chesington video on Back for a New Adventure. Chesington video will be linked in the description box below, but right now we're in the beautiful historical Greenwich. We're now outside Flamstead House. The astronomer used to live in here. Let's go and be nosy inside. These guys you can see here, Edmund, Nathaniel, Neville, James and John. John, William, Harold, Frank and George were astronomers at Greenwich. Ten astronomers lived here in Flamstead House, 1676 to 1948. Their data gathering helped astronomers and navigators at sea. Thomas, Caroline, Margaret, William, Jesse, Joseph. Oh, I love this clock. This is Margaret. You can see the Royal Observatory in the background. Very fashionable teenage girl with her dog. I can so relate. I'm obsessed with my dog as well. She used to live here. She doesn't look very happy though. She must have sat there a really long time for that. So here are some natural remedies for your good health, for a cold and for a fever. Almond for lip salve, tobacco for cleaning your teeth. Oh really? Yeah, I can smell something. Lemony and ginger. Lemon for coughs, that makes sense. Rosemary for washing hair, yeah that'll be fresh. Ginger digestion. Never one Sophia. Some really cool lotions and potions. And a cute little clock. Never masculine. Okay. This thing's called a banyan. So banyan is like the Indian name for a robe and it is an Indian inspired outfit because he quite liked their outfits, like the Lord used to wear this around the house. So he got the material made from India and brought over and he used to wear this around the house. He was inspired by Indian culture and fashion and he literally wore this like a king around his palace. Just imagine Neville, the astronomer, walking around this Flamstead house. So here you can see relaxing together after croquet taken during the 1860s this photograph shows the entire airy family the eldest surviving daughter hilda sits with her parents on the bench while anna osman christabel Hubert, and wilfred sit on the grass my obsession continues with these granddad clocks we actually found this amazing white statue can you see him there's yeah. George. We go early, so the astronomer we were just talking about, this is the guy that discovered the Meridian line. He used to live here. And this is his house. They had how many children? Nine. And Nine. six survived. George Biddle Airy. That's as he aged. And then we can go back and see the young George. How cool is this? I mean, this just lives on forever. It's just amazing. What a handsome fellow. Hey, George. <laughs> so right at the top, can you see the line? So this was presented to him. So after three invitations, he finally accepted the government's um, offer of getting a knighthood. So he took it and that was part of his dress that he had to wear to get his knighthood. And then the other stuff you can see are like thank you gifts or honours he's received from wow. different parts of the world. Well done George for your lifetime achievement and you were knighted so pretty cool. Let's look around your house a bit more. Then we're walking into the octagon room for the first time. <gasps> wow, it is octagon. We're inside the octagon right now. This is one of the few surviving interiors by Sir Christopher Wren, the architect of St Paul's Cathedral. Some serious astronomical work 
was done here, but it was mainly built for pomp, allowing important visitors to do some amateur observing in elegant surroundings. The octagon room also housed two very fine clocks, which only needed winding once a year. These timekeepers used long 13 foot pendulums concealed behind the panelling to keep accurate time. They were sufficiently accurate to resolve an ancient puzzle by proving that the earth turns at a constant rate throughout the year. So the octagon room is one of the few surviving interiors by Sir Christopher Gair, originally called the star room or great room. And the main room was mainly used for observing eclipses, quite good comets and other unusual celestial events. We are now here, London, England where the Greenwich Mean Time was set for the entire world. And that's what separates the east and west, this line here. The meridian. There's the line. This is H1. Harrison's first time people. 1736. There was a £20,000 reward and everybody wanted to be the first and the most innovative. Then we're on to H2, second attempt. Because everybody wanted the mobile timekeeper to help them navigate better on the ship. So this is H3, attempt number three, John Harrison, to make a mobile timepiece to make naval navigation easier as there was no aeroplanes. Sea travel was of that was big importance. And then finally, the H4, oh which my God, so tiny. is drastically different. They have completely invented something so different to H1, 2 and 3. Harrison's fourth timekeeper. This watch finally proved that the timekeeper method of finding longitude was practical. It was tested at sea twice during the 1760s and exceeded the requirements specified by the Longitude Act of 1714. Harrison received part of the reward in 1765 but had to petition for further payment. These are some helpful longitude tables and navigational instruments. So if humanity ever fails we can go back to these. John Hadley, 1731. Hey John, John Harrison, there he is himself. And look how proud he is holding the H4. Looking very dapper in his brown ensemble and white wig. John Arnold, he contributed to the development of the modern chronometer. Thomas Earnshaw, a talented watchmaker. Look at him writing, writing with quill and ink. No texting or emails back then, not even pens. They would transport these clocks in these boxes and timekeeping became mobile. Humans are ever evolving with their technology. Who knows where our technology will go to next? Turret clock. Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. Me 
metal. What kind of mechanic? I love that you can see inside this one. Cute. This looks like some sort of science experiment. <laughs> God only knows what the like Frankenstein's bride has made in this, I'm sure. 1874, here before us, it'll be here long after us. What is this? What on earth is this science experiment? I mean, if you're into mechanics, that is a dream right there. More modern timekeeping pieces. Well, not really modern anymore, but it's definitely advanced from John Harrison days. And some money, honey. Make sure you donate when you go to the museum. Help them out. And who remembers telephones? I mean, guys, unless you're born in the 80s or 90s, you won't understand telephones. You won't understand having a home line. You won't do this. Pretend you're talking on the phone. No, like, yeah. without a phone. Oh. Just show me with your hands. See, look, she's doing the gesture, but if you ask someone who's not a millennial, they don't do that. Tell me, show me what the kids nowadays would do. Look how much it's changed. How do you answer the phone if you're born in the 80s or 90s? You pick it up and you hold it like this and you talk. Now, if you're born as a Gen Z in the 2000s, how do you answer a telephone? You can walk around, you can do what you want because it's hands free. Look how much times have changed. It's not this, this is gone, it's this now. This is how you answer the phone. What is next, guys? This is Edmund Halley, 1656 to the Royal Observatory and touch this. Oh my god. Look at us, we're touching it. <laughs> and then it will meet you. This is actually a meteor from Africa. This come from space and hit the earth prehistoric times 4.5 billion years ago. Wow. You've got to come and touch this. It's like epic. Yep, do it. I can't believe I've touched it. I didn't know this is what I was going to and we're literally both touching it right now. You 
you got to try this. On our way here, I actually got this cold pressed juice ginger shop, ginger and apple. Where did you get it from? I got this from Pret, so you got to keep your immunity up. Stay healthy, guys. I'm gonna give this a little taste test. Apparently, ginger burns you like all down your throat. Feels okay so far. Let's smell it. She's giving it a good shake. She's ready. It smells okay, and also they talked about ginger as home remedies inside Flamsteed House. So this is hundreds of years old. This ginger remedy. Let's go. Here we go. You ready? Do I take it down like a shot? <laughs> I mean, it's quite a big shot, but it's just try and see how I'll much you can knock it. back. Oh wow, you did it. Oh, it burned in my throat in a good way. <laughs> oh. It's yeah, like I've just swallowed like a fireball in my throat. Wow. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yes, I'm a ginger girl. Well done. She got her health fixing. I just took it down. I took it all down. In one. <laughs> down yeah. in one. Yeah. I recommend that ginger shop. Cold press, ginger and apple juice. Prep. So they put a bit of apple into like numb it down. Yeah, apple gives it that bit of sweetness, but that ginger is burning my throat right now, but in such a good way. Love it. Just come out of the Royal Observatory. Yep. A lot of stuff is closed because of this time of year and what's going on in the world right now. We've got to touch the 4.5 million year old meteorite. You've got to do that. If you come to the Royal Observatory, Make planetarium sure as well. Yeah, planetarium, we didn't get to do this time, but I've done it many times before. So I highly, highly recommend the planetarium. And we'll be back when definitely and here's a statue of Yuri Gagarin my grandma has such a crush on him she is obsessed he is actually quite handsome he was a celebrity back in the day and I'm pretty sure if it was my grandma's heyday again she would throw her knickers at him <laughs> come here Yuri I want a piece of that Yuri Gagarin <laughs> Look at him, how handsome. Have you seen how handsome he is? Like, look at his face. And he's quite tall. Quite well built. He's an astronaut. Dirty <laughs> astronaut. <laughs> oh my god, we love looking at all the ships and the clocks. My obsession with. The granddad clocks has not ended, it continues on strong. We her one for her house, when we find her one. Yeah, I need a granddad clock. I just need one in the hallway, it's got to happen. So yeah, what was your highlight? What did you enjoy seeing today? I would say I quite like the telescopes. Like, you know where the Meridian Line was, that actual ship telescope you used? Like, it was so sick, I really liked it. Definitely, you've got to come and straddle the hemispheres, east and west. You were east side, I was west side. Yeah, so, and you yeah. can stand on actually both, because if you have one leg on one and one on the other, you're actually standing on both, so it's quite cool. <laughs> and like, right in the, the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the meteor is so good. That meteorite is literally prehistoric, like, dinosaur days before humanity and it came crashing down to earth so i feel like that's so significant even more so than the time pieces like you've got to touch that that's massive and it's been so quiet today because of partial closures and everyone's on school holidays so there's no school groups really at the moment yeah we were so lucky we pretty much had every room to ourselves or maybe one or two people were in there so now is an amazing time to come because you get to see and if you like to read all the plaques come read all the plaques no one will bother you right now i'm going to take pictures it's such a great place for a picture opportunity isn't it Definitely. so this was our adventure at the royal observatory Pem and Coco strike again. <laughs> yep, and we'll be back again with another adventure, so keep watching. Thanks so much for watching, guys. 
and if you enjoyed this video give us the thumbs up and subscribe for more adventures see you in the next one